This video is an update of Episode 2, Portable DCC Control Box Build. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you to how I've integrated JMRI into my DCC configuration. Welcome to Humanity Junction, where the city intersects with humans. While this episode is going to include some technical information, I'm splitting it into several parts and you can use the video chapters to navigate through the video. I'm also going to keep this video as short as possible. So if this project is something that you are also interested in setting up, please reach out to me in the comments or through my email on the channel about page. The different parts will be a review of the main components of my DCC control box build, adding a Wi-Fi router, initial JMRI configuration, DR5000 connectivity, and then a new JMRI configuration. The overall control box is 13 inches by 12 inches by two and a half inches. The DCC command station is the Digikai's DR5000. This is powered by a voltage selectable power supply. Up to this point, I was connecting to the DR5000 with a laptop over USB to control the DCC system. I have included a volt and amp meter between the power supply and the DR5000. As this is a portable system, I want to be able to monitor for power issues. Under the rolling thunder is a DR5097 LocoNet splitter. From this unit, I can connect a Digitrax UR92 and a LogicRail fast clock and any other LocoNet accessories. There is a separate connection for additional boosters. The Raspberry Pi 4 is a Kana kit case. This is what I'm using to run JMRI. There are two PSX1 circuit breakers to protect the main track and the programming track outputs. I have installed the optional buzzers that provide an audible indication when there is a short. On the right side, you can see the LocoNet accessory connections. On the left are the DCC track output consisting of two pairs of Anderson power pole connectors. I have a 10 foot jumper cable to go from the control box to the layout. The new addition to the layout is the small router. This is the GLINet Slate GLAR750S. This router is powered via USB from the Raspberry Pi. Connected via network cables to this router are the Raspberry Pi over the red cable, the DR5000 over the green cable, and the white cable connects to my laptop. For my DCC control system, I have set up a Wi-Fi network called Humanity. Through this network, I am able to connect to the network devices in my control box. I can also use this Wi-Fi network to connect a smartphone running Y-Throttle, Engine Driver, or the Z21 app. Or I could connect a TCS UWT100 throttle or a Roco WLAN multi-mouse throttle. More on this later. To connect to JRMI through the network, I am using VNC Connect by RealVNC. I am using Steve Todd's JMRI image for Raspberry Pi and his webpage provides the username and password to connect. This image of JMRI comes with a lot of existing profiles and is designed to auto detect which DCC system you will be using. I modified the Digitrack simulation profile for my needs on Humanity Junction. During the initial configuration, I decided to set up the connection from the Raspberry Pi to the DR5000 over the network using LocoNet over TCP IP. I was using the LocoNet protocol for all of my network traffic. I also checked the settings on the Y Throttle server. While this setup was working, I was not able to use the Z21 app on my tablet or use a Loco WLAN multi mouse throttle. I wanted to see if I could get this working. I connected my laptop to the DR5000 and went exploring. The first thing that I did was to go into the LAN settings. Whatever communication protocol is selected here will be the same protocol used for both LAN and Wi-Fi. I was using LocoNet over TCP IP, but I switched it to Z21. After confirming the LAN settings, I double checked the Wi-Fi settings. I thought that I would need to connect my smartphone to the DR5000 Wi-Fi to use the Z21 app, whereas I would connect to the Humanity router to use the Y Throttle app. One thing to note, to change the DR5000 LAN settings, you need to have your computer also connected to the LAN port so that the DR5000 has a valid IP address. 
Some of the main settings can be found in the DR5000 control properties. You get to these settings by clicking on the control start stop button in the configuration software. It was here that I noticed the drop down next to connect via that said USB. I saw that I could change this setting to network and set the IP address. What I am trying to accomplish is to be able to connect my laptop and JMRI to the DR5000 at the same time. If the laptop can connect over the network, then I can modify the Raspberry Pi configuration to connect via USB. After some testing, I was pleasantly surprised that I was able to connect the laptop via the network with all of the current settings on the DR5000, so I went back to the JMRI configuration. Since I was changing the settings, I decided to upgrade to a new image that Steve Todd recently released. At this time, I also changed the hostname, password, and disabled the access point and enabled Wi-Fi. All of this information can be found on Steve Todd's website under Advanced Settings. While I had no idea what I was doing, if you follow his instructions, everything works out. Once again, I set up a Humanity Junction profile, but instead of LocoNet TCP IP, I used LocoBuffer USB. I used the brute force method of trial and error to find the correct USB port. On this version, there are also a lot more pre-configured startup items. You can add or remove additional items here. The good news is that this completes the setup. I'm really hoping that I have not completely lost everyone. From my experience, I just keep trying different things. And when I get stuck, I reach out to other people for help. And it is thanks to the community that I now have my DCC control system configured in a way that I'm very happy with. To summarize, the Digikai's DR5000 command station is connected to the laptop through the network. The Raspberry Pi with JMRI is connected over USB. Z21 throttles and apps connect over the Wi-Fi network to the DR5000. Other apps, such as Y Throttle and Engine Driver, as well as Universal Throttles such as the UWT100, connect to the Y Throttle server running on the Raspberry Pi. If you would like any additional details about any aspect of this setup, in addition to leaving a comment below, you can contact me through my email on the channel about page. Thank you for watching. Please leave any comments or questions below and don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Please subscribe and select the bell icon to receive notifications. Thanks again and have a great day.